Welcome back to the Fun Calculus program. Right now I'm going to show you how to solve some calculus problems using GeoGebra, such as this problem. What is the maximum point on this curve? If you remember, we're looking for the point on the curve where the rate of change is zero. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. That's the top point. Rate of change is the derivative, so we'll find the derivative, find out where it's zero. Draw the curve. Negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. All we do is type in derivative. We can type in the beginning and it finishes it for us. It named the function f of x, so we just have to type in f. Give me the derivative of f, please. And that straight line is the slope function. It represents the slope of f at every x value. Where is it zero? All you have to do is intersect two objects, the slope function and the x-axis. That point is a, 3, 0. The x value is 3. Where's the maximum point? Wherever f of x equals 3. We can find that by making a line at a perpendicular to the x-axis. And where it intersects f of x is at 3, 4. That's the top point at that curve. The minimum value of this curve is going to be the point where the rate of change is zero at the bottom. All we have to do is graph the function, find the derivatives, find out where that derivative is zero, and that x value is the x value of the lowest point. This function is x squared plus 10x plus 23. We have to move it over a little to see it. I want the derivative of f. And I want to know where that is equal to zero. So where does the slope function, the derivative, intersect the x-axis? It's at negative five. So the lowest point, make a line at a perpendicular to the x-axis. Where does that intersect f of x? At b, which is negative five, negative two. That's the lowest point on that curve. It's important to be able to know when something is concave up and concave down. Using GeoGebra, it's pretty easy. Concave up parabolas are just where the coefficient of x squared is positive, like positive 1. It's concave up. The thing about this is its derivative is a straight line. Its slope is always positive. So the derivative of f, and it's the second derivative, is there. It's always 2. The second derivative of our parabola is always positive. Even when the slope is negative, it's always getting more positive. We can just change the positive coefficient to a negative coefficient to show you a concave down parabola. The original parabola will color blue. First derivative can be green. and the second derivative will make red. See the original function is concave down. Its slope is always decreasing. So its acceleration, the rate of change of its slope, is always negative. So how about a function that goes from being concave up to concave down? Think about the acceleration between those two states. When it's concave up, the acceleration, the second derivative, is positive. When it's concave down, the second derivative is negative. Well, what is it between those two states when it goes from positive to negative? It's just where the second derivative is zero. Let's take a look at one. Negative x cubed minus 5x squared 
plus 15. Squeeze it down a little bit. We'll find the derivative of f. Might as well make it the second derivative. That's that function. We'll color it red. We'll make it thicker. Where's that zero? Where does it intersect the x-axis? At negative 1.67. You could also use a perpendicular line at a, perpendicular to the x-axis. Where does that intersect our original function? 1.67, 5.74. Our last problem is the classic box problem. And here it is. An open box is formed by cutting squares of equal sides from the corners of a 24 by 15 inch piece of sheet metal and folding up the sides. Determine the size of the cutout that maximizes the volume of the box. First you have to visualize it. Actually these cutouts don't look very square, but use your imagination. Let x represent the size of the cutout. The volume of a rectangular box is the length times the width times the height. We know what the length is. It's 24 inches, but you take out an x here and another x here, so it's 24 minus 2x. Similarly, the width of the box is 15 inches less two x's cut out. And the height when you fold up the sides is going to be x. Replace those into our formula and the volume is represented by that function. And we could multiply all that out or we could just enter that into GeoGebra. 24 minus 2x times 15 minus 2x times x. probably way off our chart. So, there it is. Here the x-axis represents the length of the side of the square we cut out of the sheet metal. And the y-axis represents the volume of the box once we put it together. We want to find out where the top is, and that's easy. We just find the derivative of f and find out where it's zero. Point A is at x is three. We cut out a three by three square. What's the volume at that point? Four hundred and eighty-six cubic inches. That's how to use GeoGebra to solve these difficult calculus problems pretty easily.